reality that is all too familiar in today's society. Even in the church, many Christians have a misunderstanding of the purpose of marriage. This virtual chapel explores what that purpose should be, and tells the story of a couple who got a second chance. Take a listen to Leo and Cynthia's story. Leo and I got divorced in May of 2009. Well, Leo and I had a lot of the same drinking buddies. We, we grew up about a town away from each other, um, and in those two towns, everybody kind of melded together. Started dating almost immediately. We went ahead and moved in together because that was easier. It was kind of a whirlwind. It was just like... Since we both didn't really have a foundation in anything else, it was really easy for us to just kind of immediately become codependent. We were hanging out on the patio like usual, and then he was like, I'll be right back. And he goes inside, and he comes out with the ring, and. He's just like, ah, will you marry me? And I was like, yeah, our lives could be different now. It was just like, you want to you wanna do this or what? <laughs> Five months later, we got married. I mean, it seemed like we were having a good time, but there was still something missing. She would always ask me, you know, why do we get up in the morning? Like, why do we go to work? Like, what's the point of all of this? And I never had a good answer for her. I was like, I don't know. I think I really was just looking for some kind of meaning and I would try to find it anywhere I could. Like maybe if I buy some new clothes, I'll feel better. Maybe if I start drinking vodka instead of whiskey, you know, that'll go better and I'll feel better. She began to just sort of isolate herself and just kind of remove herself and just pull back away from me and cried a lot. I could never get to the bottom of it. I could never figure out exactly, you know, what was going on or what I could do to fix it. Um, and so eventually I was just like, hey, um, you know, maybe my problem is you, Leo. Maybe you should just move out. We're done. Divorce. I really didn't even put up much of a fight at that point. I was just so over it and so burnt out. So we threw in the towel. Things just got worse from there. I didn't talk to Leo for about six months and I changed jobs and I moved. I, I drank more. I was by myself more. It, it was just a really lonely time. There was a client I had at work who heard about my divorce and I think he could kind of tell that something was wrong with me and, and he was just like, hey, there's a recovery ministry at my church that, that you might really like to go to. I just felt so sad and I was like, that church guy probably knows some stuff. And he introduced me to a newcomers group and I got the idea from that night that, hey, this Christian thing is really personal. I would cry and listen to worship songs on the way to work, on the way home, laying in bed at night, and then look at how I'd been living and, and just seeing like, oh, this is really sad. I was also like, man, I didn't treat Leo very well at all and I didn't understand him and I didn't understand the situation and I really need to talk to him about that. That takes guts to come and ask somebody for forgiveness. Leo was definitely flabbergasted. He was just like, you, you know, you're really different. I can tell that something's happening and so I invited him to church with me and he went a couple times. I remember being skeptical or, you know, joking about bursting into flames when I walk in, you know? <laughs> and uh, somebody had mentioned that there was a apologetics group for people who weren't believers. It's always fun to have somebody to argue with, you know, that was sort of where I was at. Once he started going there, he kept coming every week. Came the realization that, that there is an answer to these questions, and it was like a weight had been lifted off me, and that there is a God, and that God loves us, and He wants to be with us. I met up with him. I did it. And I'm like, you did what? And he's like, I trusted Christ. Eventually we started dating again. Our dating got more and more serious and uh, good, like strong believers in my life had kind of continually encouraged me to, to even like contemplate the idea of like remarrying Cynthia and like came to the conclusion that, yeah, like I do want to spend the rest of my life with Cynthia. I've always wanted to spend my life with Cynthia, you know, but now we're going to do it in a way that's healthy and in a way that will bring honor to God. Friends and family, you know, look at us like we're crazy when we decided to get remarried because it's just, it's unheard of. I can't believe today is finally happening. I've been praying for it for so long. I bet Leo is so nervous. I'm wearing my hamburger socks. Actually, I'm wearing mix match socks, it looks like. <laughs> Everyone in this room, we have a front row seat to a remarkable story. This kind of thing doesn't just happen, which begs the question, 
What makes you think it'll work this time? Leo and I were depending on each other to get the love and the satisfaction and the fulfillment that we needed as people. But now that we know that God is the source of that, we can rely on Him together. He's taken something that was destroyed, was gone, uh, my relationship with my wife, and uh, He's given it back. Now we have a purpose, which is to know Christ and make Christ known. Everyone, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Leo Booker. Tried marriage on their own. It lasted 12 months. Five years later, remarried with Christ at the center. 